it's Wednesday and I'm so excited about this today. We've got this fabulous uh, roll draw uh, drawing for you. I hope you're going to really enjoy it. We're going to turn it into a beautiful watercolour painting at the end if you've got some paints. If not, don't worry, just get your pens out. I'm going to um, really enjoy doing this. So let's start doing George and his marvellous mess. Today, with our George picture, George for George's Marvellous Medicine, we're going to think about shapes within shapes. So if I, if you imagine that's my first shape there that, I'm, that we're going to start with, what, and if that's another shape, and then another shape, what I want you to think about is this shape here. So if I colour this red, okay, you don't have to do this at home, it's just to have a think about it. That is the shape within the shape, which artists call the negative shape. And when you're drawing, our, our thought is to think about that shape and that shape. But what I want you to think about when you're doing it as well is the shape within. And as you develop as an artist, really looking at that shape, the shapes within the shapes, oh my goodness, I cannot describe how much it's going to help your drawing. So when we're drawing today, first of all, on your, on your warm-up page, just ha try having a go at doing some shapes and then colouring them in to remind yourselves to look for the shape within the shape. Right, let's start drawing George. Okay, we are going to start by thinking about where we want these very first shapes and I want you to go smack bang in the middle of the paper and put a little dot. And from that dot, we're going to start with George's first shape. So we want to leave plenty of room here on this side of the paper for the med marvellous medicine. So we'll start here. And from that dot, I want you to go around. And it's a quite odd shape that we're, we're starting with. If we have a sort of, it's almost like a line up here. It won't make any sense until we start moving on. And then we're going to come around and join it. It's like a half circle, really, that we're doing. You'll see when we pause, so don't worry too much about it yet. And from there, from that bottom bit, I want you to draw a little triangle. Again, I know it seems odd, but it's to really help us to think about the shapes as they actually are, not as we think they should be, because when we draw a face, usually we'd think of drawing a circle, but we're not. We're going to start with that strange shape there. And then this line here, nice and loosely, I want you to bring it down so it comes out like this. This is going to form his body. And that's the shape we've got. So we've got those three shapes, that funny half circle, a triangle, and then this sort of bendy shape here. Now, remember what I talked about in the startup. I want you to think about the shapes within the shape. So coming down to about there and go out there like that. This is going to form his arm. So think about that shape there between it and take it up the top and down. And we're going to do exactly the same with the other arm. So imagine that that's the triangle there between it. Take it out, down, and then we're going to put in another shape here. So they're our first shapes to create this character. So can you see starting there, moving through? So if you pause it now and you can put those shapes in. Right, we're gonna focus now on turning this shape here, this almost bean shape that we've got and making it into George. So here we're gonna put in a little mouth and then come round and we're going to bring it out to there. And what you'll see on the when we pause it is that this bit is marked as a red dotted line. So you'll be able to see where your line is. I'm going to take it out for a nose. And there he's got quite a sharp no nose that we can take out. Keep it close to this and you will really see how much it's not a circle, George's head. And why sometimes these... Um, what seem quite simple drawings can be much harder than we think because we, we draw in circles instead. So we'll take it out there and we're going to have, this is what is going to become his hair. We've just got a few little odd lines here, nothing joined. So when you pause it, you can really look at where you've got that basic line and then start adding those shapes on. And you'll see that the eye is actually under where the nose is. Think about where it goes and then you're going to put it in there like that. 
So we've got here, let's go back to here now. Let's turn that into a little chin. That triangle becomes a chin and the top of his top there. And from the back, the neck there is going to come. We'll follow that line for a little bit and then just out for a tiny bit and round. And that's him starting to come in. If we put his ear shape in there, and three little dots. So from that basic bean shape, suddenly it's turned into George from George's Marvellous Medicine. And the other thing I want you to add here is this line, which on the next one is going to become the spoon. And here, just the very last thing here, I want you to do it on his body is to take it out a little there. And then this line, we're going to join up to make an arm. And there. So if you pause it, the lines in red are where you put the shapes in last time. And these are going to be your new lines and make sure you rub out any of these old ones. OK, so we'll start here just by putting a little mark in there and that puts in his other leg. Then we're going to focus on the spoon, the bottle and the hands. Hands get people into a right flap. Please don't flap. Just think about the shapes and put them in. So we're going to start with the thumb which is a shape there. And we're gonna put a semicircle over the top. How simple is that for the spoon? Over the top of the spoon. And then one, two, three. That's all you need to do for that top hand. And it'll come in. And for the shape of the spoon coming out, I'm gonna take it down there, out, and then another, almost echoing that semicircle. We're gonna come down there like that. And we've got his spoon. So now you've got that shape in for the hand and on the guide sheet, you'll see it's there when you pause it, it's like a little red dotted line. I just want you to come up like that and then just take the fingers in. One, two, three, four. And our hand is done. Now the bottle's so simple. I've left that to the end to finish it off. We've just got this shape here. So pop in the bottle shape and the funny bit at the top. Now, we're going to paint it and we're going to use a palette paint and a few watercolour pencils and you're going to, it's going to be so much fun. So if you've got some paints, please stick with us and have a look at what, how we're going to do it. If not, look at the colour version and see what you can create with your pens or your um, colouring pencils and we'd love to see them. Okay, so we're going to start here. We're going to use our paint palettes for the vast majority of this. And in fact, you can use the paint palette for the whole of it if you need to or want to. So we're going to start by mixing ourselves a skin colour. Lots of water there. Lots and lots of water. It's all about the water wash. I'm going to put a bit of yellow in. Did you see how little there? A little bit of yellow and hardly any red. I think that's possibly too much. So no, we'll go for a bit more. So all, this is really all about the water with a touch of paint in. Let's test it out. Oh, just about right. I might need a touch more pink in. Let's see. Oh, yes. Spot on. Then I'm just going to take that on my paper and I'm going to paint in. I'm going to take it quite high up because his hair is only really at the top there, right round the ear and to the back of the neck and all the way down into here and paint that. So if any of you did the pilot pirate, you'll remember this is how we mixed the paint there. And if you've not done that before to mix a skin colour and you're struggling, maybe you get someone to help. But it really is just about using hardly any paint and lots of water because that's the joy of these watercolours. That's what you get from them. Right. So we'll put in that last hand. So that's our skin colours put in right now. Let's have some real fun with this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take in my palette lid there three sets of water here like this. You see? One, two, three. And I'm going to add this alizarin crimson, which is a kind of ready colour here. I'm going to add that to each of them. Now this one here, I'm only going to add the red. I'm not going to add anything else. But this one here, I'm also going to go and add from my palette here a touch of purple. So I've got a purpley colour there. Oh, lovely. 
I've got a red colour. Now we don't, I don't ever usually use white, but this palette, this one that we've been um, testing out here, this has got a white in. So it's kind of like a gouache, which we use at the Little Art School a lot. So if you add it in, it will turn that slightly pinky, which is what we're looking for. Can you see I didn't clean my brush properly? Are you thinking that, Elizabeth? There we go. We've got a pinky one there. Right, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to turn my painting upside down. I do this all the time. I love painting upside down, but you'll see why I'm going to do this because it just is going to make it easier. And what I'm going to do is now I'm going to wet my watercolour brush and I'm going to create it as if we've got this just with water first. I'm going to take it out and round. Can you see that yet, on Elizabeth, yeah. if you film that? I've just put lots of water on the page there. And into that water, what I'm going to do is just drop some paint. Now, as I drop it, it will all start to mix in with each other. Can you see that? So I'm mixing it in. I'm just going to let it mix together and I'm going to have the pink. So this pinky colour comes right down. Now, as soon as I turn the page, what you'll see is that as soon as I lift it, it'll start to run in together. And that's fine, because that's the effect I want. And it'll take a minute or two to dry, but I'm quite pleased with that. Can you see it looks sort of magical for his marvellous medicine? So we'll leave that to dry for a minute. Now you can just finish this with your palette if you want, but I want for any of those of you who've got watercolour pencils at home and want to be playing around with them, I will have a little go with that. Otherwise, just use your palette and use the different colours straight from your palette. But I'm going to do his hair with a bit of yellow here, which I'm putting in. And I also just, to, this is an added touch of sophistication here. I'll add this other yellow here. It's a bit of yellow ochre. And if I take my paintbrush, I'm going to just take it round to the edge of his hair like that, where it joins the skin. And can you see the other yellow there? how that changes it slightly, just makes it a little bit darker. And, and you really need water on my brush here because I'm going to take the pigment up to here and out. There we go for George. Right, and then if we come onto his top, again, I'm going to just do this very loosely. You'll see why I'm not really going in for outlining this, which I have done in the past with the, some of these things because I'm going to use a black pen to do that in a minute. So we'll go in and I'll just you take the pigment right to the end and I'm going to leave a few white gaps there as well. Just because that's how they are in the illustrations. Okay. And then we've got some jeans, his jeans at the bottom. Make sure my brush is clean so it's not doesn't end up turning purple with the red and the blue. And to finish this off, we just need a bit of silver here on the spoon. It's just grey and brown for the yucky medicine. I wonder how many of you have read this. Oh, it should come up to about there. This book about all the crazy things that he put in the medicine. I loved this book. I think I read this with maybe all four of my children. Yeah, I think so. That's how much I loved it. It's so much fun. Um, so turning the brown there, and then I'm going to do the same with this bit of silver here on the spoon. And then what I'm going to do is just give it one minute to dry. It dries really quickly, this. And then I'm going to come back with my pen. Okay, so finishing off now with my black. I'm using a fine liner here, but if you've just got a felt tip or whatever you've got or, an, or a biro. Now, I'm going to be quite careful with these lines here, just around the face. But with the other lines, I'm really not going to be too careful because I think the joy of these illustrations is how the marks are actually really quite loose and fast. And what you'll notice if you look up the illustration is we've just got the odd line here and there. Rather than an outline on some of it, we've just got lines like that. Okay, and then coming round, and I'll do this bit really quickly. You can go a bit slower, but I'll just finish it off. Here by going round all the marks we made and it just gives it a 
really sort of professional little finish to the drawing. Make sure you go around the medicine bottle, give it a few extra lines there. And then whatever you do, take a picture and send it to us because we would love to see it. enjoyed that and um, I know Elizabeth and I have had loads of fun with it so I really hope that you enjoyed it too. Please send us your Georges and if you're thinking to yourself I've got a bit of time this afternoon once I've done whatever it is that's been lined up for you maybe have a look at the senior one because we've got Matilda so have a go at that too and you can do double doll today. Tomorrow it's Draw With Granny and just because we're back doing our homeschooling we really hope that you will still enjoy um, doing this painting and getting your grandparents, aunties, uncles, whoever else interested and involved in drawing with you. So it's going to be Elizabeth tomorrow and she has got some really beautiful bluebells for you. So we will see you then.